It's just really interesting that there's actually three snakes in here. They don't have eyes. You can see on some of these guys, you don't have the uh, the area between the nostril and the bottom of the mouth hasn't closed off completely. <laughs> Aloha! Top of the morning, friends and family. We're gonna get into the meat. <laughs> We're gonna get into the meat of this video. In just a moment. First off, we do have a clutch that I wanted to show you, and it's from this mom clutch. right here. Clutch! It's from this mom right here. This is Bernice, our black-eyed leukistic animal. This is a super fire. Ooh, and right before we check out the clutch, I just wanted to mention to you guys. Um, and she's white, but she's beautiful, but even white. This is not my favorite color. Oh, even though white's not your favorite color, she's still beautiful? Yep. Fair enough. But she's got all kinds of cocoa getting all over here. I've got a lot of questions about how I say leukistic. People are like, am I saying it wrong? Am I saying it wrong? I just, I just wanted to go, just like we're gonna get into information about the title of this video, I wanted to get information about that. <laughs> Leukos is the Greek root of the word, which is Greek for white. And that's where the word leukistic comes from. And other words like leukocyte, which is a white blood cell, another one of those words that stems from that Greek word leukos for white. There is also the word leucine, which is an amino acid that's like a crystalline white. It's one of those things, you can kind of say it either way. If you want to stay closer to the Greek origination of the word, then leukistic. If you want to go to the newer pronunciation, then you could say leucistic. It's a tomato-tomato situation, so. Let's see baby snakes. Yeah. Baby snakey, baby snakey. So per the usual, I got a little ahead of myself. The mother of the clutch is the one for the title of this video. This is a different clutch. This is Coral Glow. And all of their names are chocolate. <laughs> this is the daddy of this clutch. His name is the King, and he's a Coral Glow Pied. This is the mommy of this clutch, and her name is Bubbles, and she's a champagne. Bye. These three, we got good odds. We got seven females and one male. It's great odds uh, as far as talking about genders and sexes and whatever you want to call it. We got three normals here, all female. Don't bite the other one. That's what it looks like you're about to do. All three, het pied. Can we see this one, T? Snake number one here. Classic, normal pattern. Looks really good. And you got the tracking. Hi. Its name is Chocolate. His name is Chocolate. And this other chocolate here, this is snake number two. Again, classic normal. Has a nice tracking on I the back. Chocolate. And it's chocolate. And the third one here is also chocolate. And that's the third female. She has and the coolest. And all of the black ones are named chocolate. <laughs> and this chocolate. third. I'm just unusual to chocolate. I know. Chocolate. Am I, I going to have a turn chocolate. to say what I'm going to say? <laughs> Let's see. Do, do I get a turn? <laughs> Are you going to keep cutting me off? <laughs> You're such a doof doof. This one I think has the coolest pattern of the three. This is the third female, but she doesn't have quite the uh, tracking. I mean, there's still tracking, it's just not as trackable. I love the name Jolly Chocolate. Aww, that's a boy. These are all girls, T. That's a girl. All these are baby snakes are girls. Who <laughs> want those ones named to be pattern. Pattern? Yeah. You want the snake's name to be Pattern? Yeah. I know which snake we're going to call Pattern, okay? Let's take a look first here at female <coughs> number four. This is the first champagne. Number four. Number four. This is a champagne. And these are all, all four of these snakes are champagne het pieds. You can see the cool thing about het pied champagnes, they always get these little ringers. Well, I don't know about always, but we've certainly been getting lots of ringers uh, going on here with any of the champagne het pieds that we've hatched. Really cool looking snake number four. Number five. Also Number beautiful. Five. Really orange head, probably the most orange <coughs> head and nose of all of these champagnes. Um, not as much of the ringer action going on in the back there from the head pied action. And even the champagnes, even even the champagnes not head pied, they can get these ringers. So the head pied really just helps them get head pied <coughs> ringers. <laughs> if, whatever. Number six has a lot more um, dorsal patterning happening going up down down the back of the snake dorsal area. And then uh, the last champagne over here, snake number seven, this one has a little bit more of the ringer action, whereas that last snake didn't. And this snake also has a little bit of paradoxing right here, right on the side. See that seat? Looks like paradox. Yes, check if it's a girl. This is what we call pattern. These are all girls because the daddy was a <laughs> coral glow male maker. Snake number it's a girl. It's a boy. <laughs> this one is a boy. The only boy. 
He is a Coral Glow champagne. The only boy? The only boy in the whole clutch. One boy? One boy. <laughs> so, he's a Coral Glow champagne, and we did this prank because we've been... He's a Coral Glow champagne. Are you going to cut me off a bunch? Yeah. Oh, you got to let me finish my sentence, you <laughs> ding. We're shooting for this snake when we did this pairing. We, yep, we're shooting for this snake. And we've done this pairing before, but we didn't get... Yep, we've done this pairing before. And we didn't get one of these. <laughs> and... Coral Glow Champagne. This guy's staying here. His name is Paddle. Can we go upstairs now? Oh, we got, I got one more thing to pull out. Tell me it's not going to be Junior. <laughs> You're so cute. All right, here we go. This is what we're talking about with the title of this video. T, do you notice something about this snake right here? Can you tell me something about that snake? Look at that snake real closely. Tell me what you see. No eyes. Satan's your mic. Here, is it? I see no eyes. No eyes. That's no. correct. Or that other snake. Yeah, that other snake. What about this snake right here? No. Yep, no eyes on I'm gonna turn this around so you guys can get a better shot of them. Yeah, no eyes on any of these snakes, any three Except of those snakes. For that one. We still have two eggs that are waiting to hatch out. So this is the first time we've had this happen at Triple B. So we've got three blind snakes, which Triple B, there we go, three blind snakes. Don't know if these two are gonna be like that. There's a couple here that are not without eye. We're gonna learn more Greek today. You guys down for some more Greek? So anophthalmia. That's real. Anophthalmia. It then how do they see? Well, the interest, the cool thing about snakes is that they have those heat pits, so they can still see thermal images, or you know, still see like heat. So all of those no-eyed snakes that I've ever seen uh, tend that to be pretty well. That snake has just some eyes. Boop, boop. Um, we will be keeping one of these for. Uh, <laughs> educational purposes it's a great way to talk about heat pits with the kids when you have a snake that doesn't have eyes and like oh how does it see and you can explain to them that you still can see like the prey item like I, no eye snakes just hit that that prey item no problem when it's nice I and warm i hope you don't have i hope you have eyes you little ones i would hope they have eyes too it's, it's interesting we've, we've done this pairing um a couple of times you know the pastel and she clown ricky with our girl bernice the super fire so it's just interesting. There's not a lot of research into why a snake might be born without eyes, but it's rare in humans, but it does happen. And it happens in most species, it seems, you can be born without eyes. It's that, what I mentioned, anophthalmia. And, and so it's not only does it mean Greek for without eye, it also means- uh, I need to tell something very strange. Leia will be back, maybe. She needs to go tell mommy and Eli something very strange. I'm trying to imagine what it is she's going to tell them, but. So there's some interesting information about how this occurs in humans. I'd be curious to know if this is how it happens in snakes too. I would imagine it is, um, but I don't know that for certain. So as I mentioned, we're gonna keep one and then I'm gonna, other people that wanna do educational programs with these snakes, I'm gonna give these away as pets or educational animals. Um, anybody that wants them just needs to send me, you know, just pay for the shipping basically and I'll, I'll give these to you for free. So you can take them to your own educational programs and like I said, they're a great animal because they usually do well. They usually survive and do just fine. As far as eating and living, they just don't have eyes to see. Again, it's a great segue into telling, teaching about heat pits to kids. So that's why that's the big positive that comes out of this. So the most common genetic cause for anophthalmia is a mutated SOX2 gene. So it's called SOX2 anophthalmia syndrome. It's caused by a mutation in the SOX2 gene that does not allow it to produce the SOX2 protein that regulates the activity of other genes by binding to certain regions of DNA. And without this SOX protein, the activity of genes that is important for the development of the eye is disrupted. As far as the human condition goes, there are at least 33 mutations in the SOX2 gene that have been known to cause anophthalmia. And some of these gene mutations will cause the SOX2 protein not to be formed, while other mutations will yield a non-functional version of this protein. RBP4 has recently been linked to a form of anophthalmia. That form of anophthalmia was, would be, uh, anophthalmia would be uh, something that you can treat in prenatal care with, with uh, doses of vitamin A, is my understanding. But yeah, with snakes, I don't know, again, uh, there was, again, there was so much, so little research that I could find on eyelessness in snakes that I'm just leaning on the research that has been done in, in humans for 
on ophthalmia. But it's super interesting, um, really great that these animals can still thrive. I mean, much better than, than a human. I can, with humans, you know, sometimes just one eye, same thing with snakes, sometimes just one eye. The snake, fortunately, in captivity, has a much easier time of it than a human, I would imagine, because we don't have heat pits, so we can't see anything without eyes. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you guys, and as we have been sharing every single clutch, good or bad, I'll certainly keep you updated on how they do, like how they eat, and all of that stuff, but fortunately we've got a couple here that seem completely normal. This is a fire right here, fire heck clown. We'll kind of see how this goes, and just interesting, really interesting, three blind snakes. Yeah, so that's, uh, I think Leia's not going to come back down, which is fine. She's having a great time upstairs, but uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on eyeless snakes and just on ophthalmia in general. And uh, if you have any experience yourself with it, as we've been doing on these videos, I'm going to leave you guys with a verse. We will have the precious gift of eyes to see and ears to hear. It is a precious gift. And, uh, oh, speaking of that, if you guys are in Iowa, come and see us tomorrow at Iron Ridge Church. Noah and I will be in there at, at both services. So we'd love to see you guys out there if you are in the Iowa area. You guys take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we will see you in the next video, which will be an uncut video in a blood python breeding room or something like that. Either way, stay tuned. You'll see it. Guys, take care. Aloha. Aloha.